A few days ago, I sat down and watched the movie Star Wars The Phantom Menace, and in it, I was reminded of the line, there's always a bigger fish. I figured, when looking at the predators alive today, that sounded about right. For every coyote, there's a wolf, and for every wolf, there's a grizzly bear. But where do you go from here? Well, to continue, I just expanded my search to include extinct animals. By doing this, I put together a list of predators, each one bigger than the last until I finally stumbled upon the biggest fish. In other words, the largest land predator to have ever lived. You probably know this animal. Ever since it emerged in the Lake Cretaceous around 68 million years ago, the Tyrannosaurus rex has held this position. But then, that got me thinking. Before T-Rex, what other predators could have been considered the largest? And as I began to look deeper, I found the usual suspects. Giganotosaurus of the late Cretaceous, Spinosaurus that lived around the same time, and Allosaurus, one of the largest predators of the Jurassic. But then I stumbled upon some animals whose scale and adaptations both shocked and surprised me. And the one that did this better than any other is what I call the Permian's version of the T-Rex. This was a time in Earth's history dominated by the supercontinent Pangaea, and living on this giant landmass weren't dinosaurs, as they'd actually evolve about 30 million years later. Instead, it was ruled by the ancestors of us mammals, called therapsids, and branching off from the therapsids was a smaller group known as the Dinocephalians. At the time, this was probably the most diverse group of land animals on Earth, with members considered some of the first true land giants to ever evolve, ranging from the strange herbivorous Estaminosuchus to the largest land predator of the entire Paleozoic, the T-Rex of the Permian, Anteosaurus. This quadrupedal nightmare measured 15 to 20 feet long and weighed in around 1,200 pounds, with some upper estimates even pushing that number closer to 2,000. That means it was bigger than the polar bear, and was closer to the size of a small rhino. But the most striking resemblance this animal had to a Tyrannosaurus was its skull, as both animals convergently evolved to take down the largest prey. If you know anything about T-Rex, it's that they had a massive dome. And that's true, with their head taking up about 7% of their total weight. And Teosaurus, on the other hand, brought this to another level, with the best sources I've found putting their heads closer to 20%. This wasn't just because their skull stretched nearly three feet long, but also the fact that they were incredibly robust, with thickened patches of bone making them both durable and powerful. And in certain spots, these bony patches were especially pronounced. One of them was just above the eyes, forming those bony protrusions called bosses, that Antiosaurus likely used for display or intimidation. There was also thickened areas on top of their skull, leading some scientists to conclude they would have fought for mates by headbutting. This behavior could actually be seen in some of their relatives, like the large herbivore Moshops, which used its thick skull as a battering ram, similar to a modern goat or a Pachycephalosaurus. However, when it comes to Antiosaurus, we're still not entirely sure if its skull was even thick enough. A recent study suggests that if they engaged in such battles, they would have risked severe injury. Instead, it might have served a different purpose, helping them endure the immense pressures caused by their jaws, as their skulls were packed with attachment points for powerful muscles, equipping them with a bite strong enough to potentially crush bone. And because they could open their mouth extremely wide, they'd have no trouble grabbing hold of any prey or rival to tear them apart. These adaptations are what made Antiosaurus such a fearsome apex predator, and what made it look so similar to T-Rex, because if you were to look the two head on, you'd almost struggle to tell them apart. That said, for as many similarities they had, there were just as many differences. Staying on the topic of their skulls, while T-Rex had teeth primarily designed for the singular function of tearing apart flesh, Antiosaurus had more specialized, differentiated teeth, each serving a unique purpose. What's truly fascinating about that is that this feature we now only see in mammals was already present in Antiosaurus. So just because they lived over 260 million years ago, a quarter of a billion years, doesn't mean they were some primitive animal, as this similarity highlights just how closely related they are to us. Though, while us humans have four different types of teeth, Antiosaurus only had three. Starting at the front was a barrage of sharp incisors that they would have used to grip onto prey, then a pair of giant canines to pierce and slash, and then finally, shearing cheek teeth to dismember its kills. In short, they had a devastating bite. 
but scientists have long debated just how Antiosaurus might have put it to use. When examining the few remains of its ribcage, we see that, much like its head, it was heavily built, suggesting a few possibilities. One is that Antiosaurus might have hunted by overpowering its prey, with sheer strength, using its weight to pin them down, similar to modern day big cats, though far less agile. Others believe this heavy build could have almost made them too bulky, leading to the idea that Antiosaurus was actually a sluggish, low-moving animal, only capable of scavenging or ambushing at best. Some even propose an entirely different idea, that Antiosaurus could have been semi-aquatic, lurking at the edges of water and hunting much like an alligator, waiting patiently for the right moment to strike. This idea is supported by comparisons to animals like hippos, who also have dense bones allowing them to sink right into the water. But recent discoveries have turned these theories upside down. For one, antisaurids had a semi-sprawling stance, meaning their legs weren't as upright as most mammals, but they still projected out below them rather than to the sides. Comparing them to the earlier Dimetrodon, you can clearly see their more advanced leg positioning, granting them both greater mobility and speed proving that Antiosaurus was a much more dynamic predator than previously thought. To me, this just draws a lot of comparisons to the way paleontologists used to portray dinosaurs. But adding to this even further is when studying their brain casing, the parts of the brain associated with keeping balance were highly developed, something that normally wouldn't be the case for an animal that spends most of their time in the water. Ultimately, we now believe they were likely relatively fast animals, at least compared to their contemporaries, relying on quick bursts of speed to catch their prey by surprise or by targeting the weak and young. Though, due to their large size and robust build, they mostly rely on ambush rather than long pursuits. Most evidence also indicates they lived predominantly on land, with terrestrial hunting being their primary way of life. However, they did spend more time in the water than what's typical for a fully terrestrial predator. Which raises an interesting question, why? The answer lies in the environment Antiosaurus lived in, and the specific prey it targeted. While a lot of the supercontinent Pangaea was dominated by gigantic deserts, Antiosaurus would have prowled the coastal regions of modern day South Africa, a place that would have been full of swamps and rivers, as well as potential prey. As mentioned, most shops was one possibility, but other large herbivores like Bradysaurus would have been on the menu too. But its most likely prey was the semi-aquatic Tapunocephalus. It was the largest of any dinosaurian, with a size and lifestyle similar to a hippo. In contrast to these prey options, they would have faced competition from other predators, like the fully terrestrial, mammal-like Therocephalians, that would have hunted further inland leaving Antiosaurus to dominate the coastal regions. Antiosaurus, the largest predator of the Permian, absolutely dominated its environment for several million years, though this wouldn't last forever. While the Permian period ended with the deadliest mass extinction in all of Earth's history 250 million years ago, called the Great Dying, Antiosaurus, along with all the other dinosaurians, would actually go extinct about 10 million years earlier, in a lesser known event called the Capitanian Mass Extinction believed to have been caused by volcanic eruptions, it destroyed the environment that Antiosaurus called home. I hope that you can see now, while T-Rex and Antiosaurus lived worlds apart, they weren't so different after all, in that Antiosaurus truly deserves the title as the T-Rex of the Permian. Or maybe T-Rex deserves the title of the Antiosaurus of the Cretaceous. I don't know, you tell me down below. Also, tell me what you guys found interesting, leave a comment below, and as always, thank you for watching, if you haven't watched my last video, go check that out. And as always, Jehona out.